Hey there, my name is Curtis Lucas and you're watching Empire Building. In this episode, we're going to be doing an analysis on Bit Digital, ticker symbol BTBT. Make sure you leave a like on this video if you appreciate this kind of content and subscribe to the channel for future videos. I am working on doing a video like this on all public blockchain companies, but the research does take a great deal amount of time. I try to be as thorough as I can, and frankly, quite often, they do send me down some rabbit holes. And this one did not disappoint. But as always, if there are other companies you'd like me to analyze, leave the suggestions down in the comments. It's a good way to let me know which stocks are the most popular and which ones I should cover first. But for this one, I strongly advise that anyone who is invested in this company or thinking about investing in this company watch this video through to the very end. There is some information contained in this video that you absolutely need to be made aware of. But as always, you must do your own research and make your own investment decisions. I'm just here to give you some perspective. So now, let's get on with the video. BitDigital is another Bitcoin mining company, much like Riot and Mara. The first thing you'll notice when researching them is that they already have a very high installed hash rate capacity, currently sitting at about 2.2 equihash per second, seven and a half times that of Mara, and two and a half times that of Riot. That's pretty impressive this early in the bull market. How did they do it? This was the result of the recent expansion of their mining operations, where they secured a total of 17,996 Bitcoin miners in December, increasing their total hash rate by 1,003 pentahash per second. This does give them a very large boost on the competition in the race to mine the most Bitcoin. But, as we like to do on this channel, we need to go deeper than the information that they throw at you when you first open their webpage. So let's start with a quick history lesson. The company changed its name from Golden Bull Limited to Bit Digital this last September in 2020. In a press release, the company's management stated that the new name would provide a focused corporate image that more closely reflects the operating Bitcoin mining business. Prior to getting into the mining business, Golden Bull ran a peer-to-peer -peer lending business as well as a car rental business. This is a common theme among a lot of the publicly traded Bitcoin mining companies. They usually transition from some other business model into Bitcoin mining. This, unfortunately, is a little bit of a blemish on the sector because in every case that I've seen thus far, the old business venture was not successful and it always carried with it significant losses that the company would then have to deal with on their balance sheet. Now, long term, I'm not terribly concerned about this. All that matters to me is what they're doing now and what matters in this industry. I focus on the decisions that they're making now that will set them up for success in this business. The first move they made was back in April when the company acquired XMAX Chain Limited, an existing Bitcoin mining company with 16,765 miners in its inventory. These miners were redeployed along with additional purchases throughout the year in these four locations. Oh yes, I forgot to mention, BitDigital is a Chinese company. It's listed on the NASDAQ, but that's through its wholly owned subsidiary, Bit Digital USA. The parent company is actually founded in the Cayman Islands, but operates in China. Now, right away, this might set off some red flags for a lot of people, except that from what I was able to determine from this, it might not be all that uncommon. Being registered in the Cayman Islands exempts them from certain complications with the People's Republic of China and its government. But it's also a practice commonly used for companies to be able to get away with many other things. But I don't want to dwell on that too much right now. Let's just move on. The company has deployed a total of 100 miners at a co-location facility in Texas, but I imagine that was mostly to establish an operational presence in the United States. So just to be clear, this is a Chinese company that has operated out of offices located in Shanghai, which they recently canceled the lease with plans to relocate to Hong Kong. By comparison, the United States headquarters are located in this building in New York. So, so far, none of this is to suggest that there's anything shady going on here. But you need to be aware that investing in a Chinese Bitcoin mining company carries with it inherent risks that are just not present with their North American alternatives. Now, at this point, I will hint that I did find something that did set off 
a lot of warning bells. But I'm going to save that for the end of the video, so stay tuned. But for now, let's get into the Bitcoin mining part of their business, which is where they've been focusing all of their energy now. By the end of 2020, BitDigital expects to have fully deployed the balance of the miners purchased, providing them with an impressive 2.25 equihash per second. At today's difficulty, that equates to about 500 Bitcoin per month, worth about $13.5 million. But remember, I said that success in this business depends on two main factors. One, the ability to source reliable, cheap power, and two, the ability to source the most advanced Bitcoin mining equipment available on the market. Well, in, this, well, in these areas, BitDigital has not directly disclosed their cost for power, but they have detailed every single miner that they have in their fleet. So I dug into this and tabulated all the different miners that they have, their quantities, and all the specs associated with each miner. We'll use this to figure out their energy rate for ourselves. But right away from this, we can see that they're not operating the most efficient miners available. They have published that their overall efficiency as of right now stands at 55.33 joules per terahash. This is considerably more energy per terahash than is available with the S19 Bitmain miners that make up the vast majority of the fleet that both Riot and Mara uses. The S19 boasts an efficiency of 30 joules per terahash, nearly half what BitDigital's mines consume. Both Mara and Riot have published their aggregate power costs at about 3.4 cents per kilowatt hour. As I mentioned, BitDigital has not disclosed their energy costs, but they have reported their cost of revenues for the three month period ending September 30th of 2020, where it just so happens that their installed hash rate capacity through that three month period was 1.2 equihash per second. The cost of revenues declared was $6,210,712. If we assume all the miners that they had by that time, which I had already tabulated, were operational during the entire three month period, that would amount to 158.7 megawatt hours of energy, leading us to an aggregate cost of about 3.7 cents per kilowatt hour. Question my math if you want, but my Kung Fu is strong. So that puts Riot and Mars cost a little lower than Bit Digital, but it's really not that bad. The part that bothers me is the efficiency of those miners. To outline this a little further, the consumption that these miners would be consuming now while running the full 2.28 equihash per second is about 120.4 megawatts. By contrast, Mars facility, which will run on 100 megawatts, is able to have an install capacity of 3.6 equihash per second. You see? More with less. The reality is these stocks are all speculative in nature. They will all see massive gains in very short periods of time and all suffer from painful drops as well as euphoric rises regardless of the fundamentals. Just today, BitDigital closed up 81.17%. That's an incredible move, and no amount of number crunching will help you predict something like that. My goal is to mitigate as much risk as possible, so I don't think I'll be adding this one to my portfolio. And I haven't even yet touched on the juicy scandal that I uncovered. Remember that corporate diagram that I showed you earlier? Through a series of holding companies, you'll find this company, Shanghai, Danny Yu Internet Finance Information Service Co. Limited. In the fiscal year-end report for 2019, we find this paragraph under business overview. We were primarily an online finance marketplace or peer-to-peer -peer lending company in China that provided borrowers access to loans. But on October 24th, 2019, the Pudong branch of the Shanghai Police Security Bureau announced on its website that it had completed its investigations against Shanghai Danu Internet Finance Information Service Co. Limited, which is a variable interest entity of Golden Bull Limiteds, for suspect illegal collection of public deposits. As of the report filing date, 
The final outcome of the investigation was still not published, and the impact could not be estimated. Hence, the company's management decided to temporarily suspend the peer-to-peer -peer lending business in the fourth quarter of 2019. The board and management is still in consideration of running related financial businesses in different manners consistent with the People's Republic of China regulation and began to implement operations in Bitcoin mining businesses and car rental businesses in 2020. Well, that sounds kind of serious. I wonder if we can find out any more information on that. Of course we can. We have the internet. On July 31st, 2019, Pudong branch of Shanghai Public Security Bureau filed a case of Dianu Finance suspect of illegally absorbing public deposits. It is worth noting that Dianu Finance is the first peer-to-peer -peer platform that has been put on file for investigation. It is only one and a half years since its listing. At present, 17 suspects involved in the case have been taken criminal cohesive measures, the circular said. Among them, six suspects, including Yang, vice president of the company, and Zheng, director of the company, have been arrested, and Zheng, the actual controller of the company, has been chased by the police online. The case is under further investigation. At present, Shanghai police have frozen the bank accounts of the Shanghai Dianu Internet Financial Information Service Co. Limited and the persons involved in the case and sealed up the assets involved in the case. The recovery of stolen goods and losses is still in full swing and the final clearance will be carried out in accordance with the law. So obviously the company knew a lot more than they let on, especially by the time they filed this report with the SEC at the end of July, 2020. They say that they suspended operations, but they failed to disclose that their accounts were seized by the police and several of the executives and management team were arrested. One of them was still being hunted. Who were they still hunting? Oh, only the CFO. These were not low level management. So when I talk about mitigating risk, this is what I mean. I will say that it appears that as of now, anyone who was involved has been brought to justice. But all things taken as a whole, leaves a pretty sour taste in my mouth. My main point here is that while this company has established themselves outside of China, as far as their corporate structure is concerned, their primary business resides in China. And considering their recent history, who knows what kind of action the Chinese government might take against them, considering it's well known that China is not exactly fond of cryptocurrencies as it is. Not interested. They are trying to establish a foothold in the United States for mining, and who knows, they might be successful at that. But I prefer to invest in a company with a more solid footing. And as I previously mentioned, the stock will continue to post significant single day gains. I guarantee that day traders have no idea that this has happened. And even after this video, it will continue on. But if the rug should ever get pulled out from under it at any time, there will be a world of pain. So there it is. That's the data. Do with it as you will. And as always, do your own research and make your own investment decisions. That's all for this one. Now let's get back to empire building. Bye.